when the word of God comes into your life and you receive the peace that Jesus gives through his word and by the Holy Ghost, the more you walk in the light of it, the greater it gets, the greater it gets. And it says the increase of his rulership, the increase of his reign in your life, the increase of his government in your life, there shall be no end to the increase. You just keep expanding in your life on every side. You can never get smaller for getting bigger. So what I'm sharing with you is something you can trust. It's something you can bank your life on. You can only get greater and greater and greater. Hallelujah. And you know, a lot of times when we study or when we hear that we can do anything in Christ, we wonder, why couldn't we do something then? Why didn't I get the job? Why did we lose the baby? Why did we lose the pregnancy? Why did we, why did we lose that admission? I thought I got the admission to that school. Why did we lose it? Why did we lose the house? Why did we lose the car? Why couldn't we make it? Well, we prayed for the man and he still died. Why did he die? We tried everything. That's the kind of situation that the disciples found themselves that day and they came to Jesus and they said, Master, why couldn't we cast the devil out? Because they had done everything they had seen Jesus do. Otherwise, they wouldn't have asked him. They thought they had done everything. They said everything he said when he cast devils out. And then when he came, when he cast the devil out, they wondered, well, but well, that's exactly what we did. So why couldn't we, cast, why, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus didn't do anything different from what they did when he came. Otherwise, they would have said, oh, master, we see now. We see now. Something you did, we didn't do. But they watched him, and when he was through, they said, hey, come on. But we did the same thing. Why couldn't we cast them out? Hallelujah. Well, Jesus pinpointed something they didn't see. And you know, often it's something we do not see. Because we have a lot of assumptions in our lives. And we sometimes uh, we look at it in a myopic way. But look at this, verse 20. Jesus said unto them, because of your own belief. Did you see that? He said, because of your unbelief. In other words, anything is possible. If it didn't work, it was not faith, period. Faith always works. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove don't come back and say well i said it and it didn't go when you say that you are telling jesus master you are not exactly right i know better i said what you said to say and it didn't work you're telling jesus he lied jesus didn't say when you say to the mountain remove watch and see it go he said when you ask it to go it's gone you ought to act as though it's gone. You ought to talk as though it's gone. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this cancer, remove from my body. Jesus never lied to anybody. He never exaggerated his words. When he spoke, it was absolute reality. He said, I am the way, the reality and the life if you have faith as a grain of you, you know he's not talking about having a great great faith faith is not given to you great it's given to you small it's a little seed and everybody's got it if you're born again you have faith the bible says he has dealt to every one of us in the body of christ the measure of faith the measure definite article he's given us the measure of faith the same for everybody and then you grow your faith hallelujah that's your responsibility you've got to grow your faith god gives you everything hey have you seen an orange seed that has a stem you've never seen an orange seed with a stem but brother that little orange seed has in it the potentialities to produce the roots the stem the branches with leaves on them that's the way you are 
Everything, the Bible says, everything that you require for life and godliness has been given to you. I found out from the word of God, I could be anything in this world. I could go anywhere. See, your problem, your problem is not the embassy. Your problem is not the nation you come from. The, uh, glory. Nobody is your problem. You are your own problem. Look at it again. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, See, all of that prayer you're praying, Oh God, take away this thing from me. Oh God, take away this thing from me. Oh God, remove it from me. You are wasting your time. I've seen them cry like that and didn't change. Oh God, please take it away from me. Take it away from me. Take it away. Take it away. They think that, you know what Jesus said? He said, don't pray like the heathen who think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Take it away. 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 That's the way the prophets of Baal pray. You see, God doesn't hear you because you got a lot of words to speak to him. He said, if you have faith, if your faith is faith, he said, you say to the mountain, talk to the trouble. Not talk about the trouble. Stop talking about your pain. Stop talking about your lack of job or lack of money. Stop talking about the problem of your wife. Stop talking about all the problems you got in your body. Stop talking about the flu. Talk to the problem. God said, Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, you are the only one who knows. He said, all right. Let's do something about it. He said, son of man, prophesy to the bones. He said, talk to the bones. Say, oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of God. Man, oh my. Wow. God's always let us understand he is not the problem. He is with us. He said to Moses, first, he said, now, you stretch your hand over the water and divide it. He didn't say stretch your hand over the water and pray to me and I'll divide the Red Sea. He said, Moses, I want you to stretch your hand over the Red Sea and divide it. Go ahead and do it. The next time when they wanted water, he said, Moses, tell the rock to give you water. Oh, God. Dear, dear, dear Lord. He said, tell the rock to give you water. Tell the rock. They have been crying, oh God, we don't have water. The people are starving to death. God said, Moses, tell the rock to give you water. Now he tells Ezekiel, talk to the bones. These bones were very dry. That means everything that God has created has intelligence. Are you hearing me? Everything in this world has intelligence. The rock has intelligence. Are you hearing me? Moses already proved that. Dead bones have intelligence. Jesus talked to a tree. The tree has intelligence. Brother, your body has intelligence. Talk to it. You know, in a lot of places, they, they always need counseling and counseling because they don't hear the word of God. Always, you know, they got, they, they got to get this counseling from this area of their life and the other area of their life. They're going through some problems and this and that. If you receive the word of God and act accordingly, you got no problems. And let me tell you this. You can only carry someone on your faith for a while. If your marriage is being shattered by the devil, instead of quarreling with your wife or getting mad at your husband, get home and tell the devil out. It's wrong for you to say, well, I really want to stay in this marriage, but my husband just cannot accept me. My wife just cannot. If both of you are Christians, something is wrong with the two of you. We are not supposed to be victims. He said, he shall say unto this mountain.
he didn't say you shall fight the mountain he said say if you got faith he says talk death and life are in the power of the tongue brother whether you live or die it's in your mouth oh this sickness will kill me please it's really going to kill you no doctor can help you i can assure you of that you are sure going he's telling you if you see your life headed for the rocks you're going looks like everything's getting darker your life doesn't seem to get any better hey hey use your tongue come on change the direction of your life for example somebody's got hiv can't you see that you are headed for the grave? You're going and you can see that the way you're going, you can see that the way you're going, the soon going to carry your, carry your coffin. You know they're going to dig down there and they're going to put you in there. You can see it. You see, the, you, you, you see a few folks crying and some others are happy you're gone because they're tired of suffering. So what are you going to do? Hey, God is telling you, use your tongue and change that direction because you can. You can. You see yourself headed for the downward life. Use your tongue. Change the direction. Come on. Hey, come on. You can change it. Jesus said, and nothing. Hey, I like it. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. And nothing. Jesus said it. If anybody knew what reality was, it was Jesus. Because he himself was the embodiment of reality. He said, and nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Use your tongue. Change the direction of your life. Don't head for poverty. Don't head for death. Say, well, I'm 40. I've not been able to have children yet. I've had seven miscarriages. All right. Can't you see the way you're going? The way you're going. Seven miscarriages. And now you are 40. The, the way you're going. Looks like you're going to get to 60 and you'll never have a child. Hello. Change direction. Use your tongue. Make a detour at the right time. Stop saying nobody knows tomorrow. Stop saying anything that will be, will be. Stop saying that because it's not true. Jesus said, if you have faith, you shall say to this mountain, this blockage that you have in your fallopian tube, you shall say to it. Oh, glory. This evil they said is in your blood. You shall say to it, remove. Oh, glory. Out. Your life is in your hand. Your success is in your hand. God has made you a victor. You see, you've got to understand this. It's so important. It's so important. See, some people have stopped on one side of the street. See, they're, they're talking about, well, I don't want this in my life. I thank God I, I no longer have sickness in my life. Praise God for you. I'm no longer broke. I'm no longer in debt. Praise God for you. Um, uh, I no longer suffer this. These are all great testimonies. But what about what's coming in? Things I used to suffer, I don't suffer anymore. The problems I used to have, I don't have them anymore. Glory to God. That's wonderful. That thing that used to stop me doesn't stop me anymore. What I used to be afraid of, I, I, I'm no longer afraid of it. Glory to God. Yeah. But he brought you out to bring you in. But that's where many Christians have stopped in their lives. They have testimonies of, I am no longer sick. For 10 years now I've not been sick, but are you really healthy? Okay. I'm not owing anybody. All right. It's not enough to be in zero. Thank God for bringing you from minus. Now you are in zero. But that's not good enough. You got to get in the plus. That's what I mean. You don't owe nobody. Glory to God. You are healthy for not owing anybody. Well, what about the plus? Are you in the plus? You know, uh, we can be praying, oh God, you know, we want our needs met. Is that right? But you come to a point in your life where you're done. That's where I live. Where you don't have any needs. I don't have any needs. What do I need? Nothing. I don't have any needs because I got all my needs met. So I'm living in the wants. 
desires. You understand? Do I want that? Do I want to get it? No. Is there any desire? Just the plus. The surplus. You understand? The surplus. Can't, can't you just think about living in the surplus? It's possible. All right, put it this way. There's a guy who's got a car with four tires and he's a traveling. How do you think he's going to be praying? Dear God, please help me. Please, I don't want to have any problem with my tires because I don't have no spare tire. Then the other guy who has one spare tire is going to be more confident than the one that doesn't have. So why this other one is praying, oh God, oh, please don't let me have any problem with my tires. The other guy is more comfortable but if one blows, huh, he'll put the spare one. If the journey is still long, now he begins praying. You get it? But there are some cars with two spare tires. Are you aware of that? You ought to know. So the, they got two. Now that one is going to be more confident than the guy with one spare tire. Who is more confident than the one without any? Is that correct? You're sure that is correct? Okay, let's look at it student-wise. There's a student who's praying in school. Exams are coming. He's praying, oh God, I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail. He's reading so he should not fail. There's another guy. He can't think about failing. He doesn't have a problem with failing. He's talking about, he wants to make a straight A. You get it? This guy is different. Now, this other fellow, when he has a D, he says, hey. <laughs> or if he gets a C, he would tell everybody, I got a C. I thought I was going to have an E. Glory to God, I had a C. There's a guy who is angry that they gave him a B plus. <laughs> what? He says, B plus me? Why? No. You get it? He was given a B plus and he's angry. The other guy got a C and he's, Ooh. brother, doesn't matter how many A's you got in school or D's or whatever, if you have a D in life, it's not good. The A plus is real in life. Tell somebody you can live in the soft loss. Yeah. Don't barely get along. Just barely getting along. Just almost at the end of the month, your money is almost finished, and then uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, some of you are always from behind. You have taken money ahead from your office for next month, and the other month you have collected ahead. Now you are paying back and paying back, and the way things are going. Doesn't look like you will ever be able to pay back. And you're thinking, God, if I could just escape from this job, if I could get out of this country, I'll never come back. Because you know how much you're owing. Can I tell you something? If you get to America, you're still going to be owing. Why? The thing that puts you in debt in the first place will put you into it again. You say, no, 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 I've learned my lesson, no, no, You haven't. Because your lesson is not that you were not smart enough. Your tongue put you there. If you had known, my God shall supply every need of man according to his riches in glory, according to his riches, not according to, listen, according to his riches, not the economy, by Christ Jesus. Listen, listen. Have you ever read this in your Bible? First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye are of God, little children. Hey, have you ever seen that? What does it mean to you? Ye are of God. Ye hail from God. Ye originate from God. That's what he's saying. He says, ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them. You're not trying to overcome. He says, ye have overcome them. Ye have overcome them. Ye have overcome them. Because. Because. Turn to it, turn to it, turn to it, turn to it. I want you to see it. First John. 
first epistle of St. John. Hallelujah. It should be your meditation. Did you hear me? If you meditate on the Word of God, it will travel through your veins. Look at it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. <laughs> oh, can I, can, I, can I read it from verse 3? Because, oh boy, you got to get this. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Hi. <laughs> and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Now, he's not talking about the son of perdition that's coming, who will also be known as the Antichrist, but he's talking about the spirit of Antichrist that's already in the world. This spirit of Antichrist that works against the children of God. It fights against everything that is godly and Christ-like at your job, your workplace. It fights against everything that is godly, whether on television or anything. It just fights against things of the spirit of God. He says, that spirit you have already heard that it should come. He says, it's in the world. It's working now in the world. But look at this. Verse 4, ye are of God. Now, it doesn't mean ye are from God's side. The original Greek rendering there says, ye hail from God. You originate from God. You are his reproduction. Hallelujah. Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ye have overcome them. You're not going to overcome them. Don't pray to overcome them. You have already overcome them. You know what Jesus said? They are of the world. Ye are not of this world. He says, because I have chosen you out of the world. Then he said something. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation. But in me you shall have peace. Then he said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. Jesus already overcame the world. Now that means the world and its systems. And that means the world and everything that it can produce. That's the reason he said, no weapon fashioning this world against you shall prosper. He have overcome them. He have overcome them. Listen, it's got to get into your spirit. He have overcome them. Look, look here. Look here. Verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world the world inside you is greater he says look at it verse 5 they 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 are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of God he that knoweth God heareth us they are of the world. He says, therefore they speak of the world. So when they speak of their abilities in the world, the world hears them. When they boast about their abilities and the weapons of evil that they have in the world, the world can be terrorized. They can be afraid of them. The world hears them. He says, but we are of God. Only the world who knows God hears us. But what? We have overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in us 
greater is he brothers and sisters until you begin to meditate on that truth meditate on that reality and proclaim it it cannot be your possession but you have to proclaim it you have to announce it you have to declare it every day of your life greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world greater is he that is in me see I'm not of the world I have overcome the world I have overcome the system of this world I have overcome the forces of this world oh hallelujah we have overcome we are no longer victims are you hearing me the world cannot make you poor anymore you have overcome the world listen to me listen you can set loose the forces of life inside you some of you have never understood this that many of God's children who have never understood how it is to walk in the favor of God oh boy let me begin to round off with this turn to Proverbs chapter 4 Proverbs chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 20 I have overcome the world hey this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith thank you Jesus chapter 4 Proverbs from verse 20 my son attend to my words incline thine ear on my sayings let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart for they oh holy holy for they are life unto those that find them and medicine to all their flesh he says incline thine ears unto my sayings Keep them in the midst of thine heart. The word of God. For they are life to those that find them. They are life to those that find them. Do you have paralysis of the legs? Paralysis of your hands? That means the hand is dead or the leg is dead or something. Hey, the words of God are life to those that find them. And medicine to their flesh. That wound that will not heal. The word of God is medicine to it. Keep talking the word of God to that wound. Talk to that cancer. Speak the word of God to your body. They are alive to those that find them. Everybody doesn't have them. But they are alive to those that find them. And medicine to their flesh. Well, we're not through yet. Now, in verse, verse 23, he says, Keep thy heart with all diligence. Guard your spirit. Hi. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Whew. The word of God has divine ability. The word of God is the maker of the whole world, the maker of the whole earth, the maker of the universe. If you can trust in the word and keep it inside you, said the Lord, nothing shall stand against you successfully. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to his name forever. He says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. That means out of it are the forces of life. Out of your spirit. So he says, guard your spirit with all diligence. Don't let the wrong stuff come in. Don't let people suggest the wrong things to you. You are a child of favor. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot have favor. You are a child of grace. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot have the grace of God in your life. Out of your spirit are the forces of life. Hallelujah. Keep thy heart, thy spirit with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The forces of life put away from you a contrary mouth. When somebody begins to tell you rubbish, things that, don't, that are not consistent with the word of God, he says put away from you a froward mouth, a perverse mouth, a contrary mouth. Don't listen to the wrong guy. Don't listen to the wrong stuff. 
Don't read the wrong materials because they'll pollute your spirit. And out of your spirit are the forces of life. You can release the forces of life. And when you release the forces of life, there'll be people out there who are looking for you to help you. They can't understand why they just have to do something for you. I tell you, you are a king in this life. Understand it, you are not an ordinary person. Hey, you have God, little children, and you have overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world.